doing a indoor recording again. I'm so sick of this heat and the mosquitoes. And um, I got my pickup trucks in, getting work on it, so I can't pack the, I can't head out into the woods up the mountain at all anyway. And um, I'm inside doing a pile of work, almost packed up, ready to go. So I'm going to share it this way. And um, quick side note, you know we're creeping up on a couple hundred thousand subscribers. And uh, the, the channel's never pushed, never marketed in any way. And every single person come here, again, has come here on their own. And they're welcome here. The door's wide open. And um, a lot of some people are thinking this, this channel's for entertainment when it's not. This is geared up now to uh, just to support every single human being out there that's had one of these confusing, life-altering experiences, right? It's, it's funny, you know, I'll be sometimes... I'll check the, I'll see the comments because it comes up on the front of my phone, but I, I try to make an effort to stay away from the comment section. I just do. And it gets me into trouble because, like I said earlier, you know, I started doing this as I'm here to fight, man. <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes I can't help myself in those negative comments. will get my attention and I'll act on it. And that's not, never good for anybody. So, but um, I, I wonder how many, I'm, I kind of wonder how many people are here that have directly had an experience, right? I mean, I guarantee you that 100% of every single person that's had a confusing experience is here and supports this channel because it's helping them out. And uh, the people that come here that haven't had an experience, it's kind of weird how many people come here and think that this channel owes them something or it's doing something it doesn't doesn't please them, you know, or, you know, um, it's, it's kind of odd. But I wonder, I wonder just how many of the 200,000 subscribers have had a direct experience. And I'm thinking it's a very, very high percentage of the subscribers, wouldn't you? Or the viewers. And um, it just goes to show just how common these experiences are around the world. And, um, and also shows the importance. This channel is clearly showing the importance of how important it is to give the people their voice back. That is the key. That's the key to success in anything, in any topic. That is a very, very, very strong factor when it comes to uh, making changes for the better around the planet. It's about the people. It's not about organizations. It's not about a group. It's not about an individual. You know? And, but anyway, had a couple of coffees as usual. I'm starting to babble. Maybe I'll stop myself now and get to some shares. Unfortunately, right now, this is the, this is the only only way I can think of how to get all these voices heard but it's, it's one at a time you know in a book form I think is very handy like the second book's just sitting there waiting to be edited and, and get out but having a time to do it and there's I think there's over 300 experiences that are haven't even been heard in, in the second book and I think that's a good way to get it the voices out um, fast in, in, in more I think that's a good way to get as many voices heard that way as well but as we go here, it's going to be one at a time, right? I mean, and you can't listen to more than one at a time, <laughs> right? But anyway, all right, I'm babbling. Here we go. Steve, you can get my name. Never give a shit what anybody thinks. Rich Rusnak, Hastings, Pennsylvania. I don't like most people anyway, lol. <laughs> my son-in-law son -in -law and I went to camp late one night. He was in the back room splitting wood when something smacked the back wall really hard. He came running back in the front room with eyes as big as dinner plates. He was scared shitless because he didn't have his 460 mag on him. There wasn't anyone else around for miles. I also found a patch of trees with all the tops snapped off, about six or seven feet high. There had to been 20 or 30 trees snapped off. He also heard a grouse thump all night. I never heard that before at one at nighttime. I'm 57. I grew up in the woods. Our camp is in Clearfield County. There's a bar a few miles away that has a Bigfoot day every year because someone said they seen a Bigfoot cross the railroad tracks close by. When I thought it was all I thought it was all bull crap, but not anymore. PS, the game wardens say that they aren't any big there aren't any big cats around here, but I've seen pictures and heard lots of people say they have seen them. Why do they lie to us about things that can kill us? They should be warning us. Keep up the good fight. You're helping more than you know. All right, man. Rich, thanks for that email, man. And, uh, yeah, the smack on the wall experienced it firsthand. It's definitely not a fun experience. And um, why aren't they warning us? You know what? 
I'd say it's time to take that power and authority away from the day. It's all about us now. It's about the people, it was originally about the people, and the people were the power. Not those pricks who uh, take, you know, 65% of our money. Not them. So it's obviously kicking them to the curb, which they've done to us numerous times. It's time for us to take kick them to the curb, take the power back. We got the authority, we got the, the power, we got the word, we have the honest truths. That's what we're doing here. All right? Just keep this ball rolling. Um... What's this one titled? Special Forces Encounter with Sasquatch in the Allegheny National Forest. Okay, man. What do we have here? Hello, Steve. Thank you for what you do to expose the truth concerning these beings, the propaganda surrounding them, and how governments lie to us about everything. Please use my first name only. Personally, I'm old enough that I don't care what people think anymore, but the following encounter involves a few folks that wouldn't want to be linked to this incident. My apologies for the long email, but I want to relay as much detail as possible. Hey man, never apologize. It's never too long. Get it out. Everybody get it out. And with as many details as you can. I had two experiences in the 70s that I believe to be closely related. I suspect we encountered the same being miles apart. Prior to discovering your channel, I had written off the first incident as a huge mountain lion. But after watching your channel for over a year and a lot of research on mountain lions, I've come to the realization that what I experienced was a Sasquatch on both occasions. I was a guest on maneuvers with a special forces unit, Green Beret, 1975. I was 18, had just graduated, graduated from high school. My oldest brother had come back from Vietnam in 68 and was attempting to get, convince me to join the Army. Just a few years earlier, my brother had retired from the Army after three tours in Vietnam. He is a well-decorated bronze star with valor, numerous commendations, Purple Heart, etc., his military career included Airborne Army Ranger, LRRP, Long Range Reconnaissance and Patrol, and Green Beret. He was and still is the classic badass. Shortly after his discharge, he joined the SF Reserve unit to stay active and keep his skills sharp. He asked me and my friend to bring up his four-wheel drive vehicle to the Allegheny National Forest while his unit was on maneuvers there. How do you say no to a brother like that? You don't. Anyway, my buddy and I saw it as an opportunity to have a great time camping, shooting, machine guns, and blowing things up. On the second night there, we hiked deep into the old growth forest to the team's forward operations base and camped with his fire team. They would set up a defensive position on a cliff line overlooking a river valley. It was late afternoon when we arrived and were well received. We spent the night quietly laughing and talking around the Dakota fire hole. All the while, one of the team was on guard duty in an overlooked position. He had an automatic weapon and starlight scope, early night vision. The group consisted of three seasoned Vietnam veteran Green Berets, and the rest were well-trained but lacked combat experience. I gotta say, I had never felt so safe in the forest. Of course, I didn't realize until later none had been issued live ammo. Ha! Huh. However, the more experienced had brought their own live ammo. We all called it a night around 10 p.m. and retired to our tents with the exception of the individual on sentry duty. I slept very soundly. Then about 3 a.m. we heard something come into the middle of camp and let out the loudest blood-curling scream I've ever heard. I woke while the scream continued. I sat up instantly awake and almost shit myself. It sounded like it was right outside my tent and in my head at the same time. It felt like my eardrums were going to pop out of my head. Every hair on my body was standing straight up. I felt like the scream slash roar was in multiple octaves, and it vibrated every organ in my body. I've not experienced anything like it ever before ever again. I was scared shitless, and all this from a dead sleep. Frankly, it scared the shit out of all of us, and that includes the Vietnam veteran Green Berets on the maneuver. Interestingly, the soldiers that reacted verbally, what the F is that, were those reservists without combat experience. The combat veteran Green Beret kept their mouth shut, but I could hear them chambering live rounds in their weapons. Then the guy in watch called out, Clear! He said he hadn't seen a thing, even when he scanned the location of the scream while it was taking place with the starlight scope. In fact, he was one of the first to call out, What the F was that? One long, extremely loud scream, and it was gone. Almost as if to say, You are all not the badasses you think you are. This is my hunting spot. Get the hell out. After the sentry called clear, we all climbed out of our tents and searched the camp. We didn't go beyond the perimeter. We found nothing. No eye shine in the woods, not a trace of what had been in the middle of our camp just moments before. 
In the morning, we all checked again for tracks in the camp and along the perimeter and found nothing. Steve, I've heard big cats scream in the wild and I've since researched them extensively. This is not a mountain lion. The scream was different, 100 times louder, very low octaves included. Almost like it screamed in mul multiple frequencies, low, mid, and high at the same time. As I said, I could feel it in my gut as though my organs were vibrating. It was the most terrifying thing I've ever experienced. That said, this was before Sasquatch was in the public consciousness. I'd never heard of a Sasquatch till many years later. Well, that must have been something else to not be aware of these things and have that experience. That would be an absolute turn it upside down experience, would it not? Consequently, we all concluded it must have been a large mountain cat and moved on. It was the only logical conclusion we could reach. One night later, my buddy and I spent some time in the local small town. We met two young ladies staying alone at a relative's cabin. As you can imagine, we were quite enamored with the possibilities of the evening. That night, we drove out to their cabin to have a little party. However, due to a locked gate, we had to walk in about a mile on gravel road through the forest to reach their cabin. It was about 10 p.m. when we started and a moonless night. About a quarter of a mile in, we heard heavy footfalls in the woods. Every time we stopped to listen, the steps would stop. However, when we walked forward, we heard the heavy steps continue to approach us. We stopped for about five minutes at the beginning of an extremely thick, seven-foot-high hedgerow of multiflora thorn bushes, wild roses. We stood there shining our lights into the woods and listening. We yelled, whoever it was, to app off. We saw nothing and heard nothing. It was at this point everything went silent. Even the tree frogs. I'll never forget it. We both had a sense of dread wash over us. We continued on at a faster pace. Then, in the thorn hedge to our left, we began hearing something on all fours following us in the thicket. As we walked down the gravel road, it would stop and we did, then move and we did. We stopped four times and listened. The fourth time we stopped to listen, we both felt like we were being stalked and were overcome with fight-or-flight feelings. We chose flight and broke into a dead run toward the ladies' cabin. We turned when we made it to the porch and shined our flashlights back towards the thicket and saw a bright red eye shine above the hedge, over seven feet off the ground. At this point, we nearly pissed our pants as we pounded on the door to be let into the cabin. The door opened after what felt like hours as the young ladies jokingly accused us of being afraid of the dark. We spent the night but told them nothing of experience, <laughs> even though they knew something was wrong. We tried to convince them we were out of breath from running. Needless to say, we didn't leave until the next day. We thoroughly checked the thicket and the surrounding woods until we were certain we wouldn't be followed out. We found nothing. Is it possible this was the same entity that, that entered our camp the night before? Were we being tracked? Why? The two incidents in the in the two days leaves me thinking these events are beyond consequence. Steve, thanks for letting me share my story. Over the years, I've often spent time mulling these two events over in my mind. I don't believe I've ever fully comprehended the danger we were in and what had happened, at least not until your channel came along. I'll never go into the forest unarmed and unaware of these beings again, period. Thank you for that. Keep up the good, keep up the fight for the good in this world, Steve. We're all in your debt. Best regards, Stephen. All right, man. Um, Steven, thanks. Thanks for sending that in, man. And uh, obviously you found this channel. You've heard everybody else's experience being shared. You know that your experience, what you experienced, has happened to freaking thousands of other people. Why these things pace us and parallel us blatantly, meaning they, they make noise to let you know, I haven't a clue, man. I haven't a clue. How do their eyes glow in the dark? I haven't a clue. Obviously, it's not a monkey or a gorilla, right? Why people still keep on trying to convince the public that these things are just an unacknowledged game animal, I haven't a clue. But we're getting to the bottom of it. This channel's making a difference, 110%. Anyways, thanks for sending that in, and uh, be sure to send in more if you come across knowledge that the people need to hear. Um, make sure you send it in, right, man? And uh, be safe out there. Here's another one. My weird experience in Alberta. All right, here we go. Hi, Steve. My name is Kevin Emart. I watch every day 
a new video comes out. Been watching since you told your own experience. Sorry about your loss, Mr. Macaroni. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Here are my weird experiences. But first, I'd like to say you have the dream job of my life being a hunting guide. Wish I was doing it also. I was seven years old. My cousins and I were starting to play hide and go seek. I had the great idea to go outside and out in our garbage bin. <laughs> I walked out of the house, saw a light on me. I looked up. I was staring into a big fireball in the sky. I closed my eyes to blink, then opened up again. Then when they opened up again, I was standing under the street light across the road. I lived and grew up in High Prairie, Alberta at the time, on the last street on the north end by a graveyard. Anyway, I ran inside to tell everyone I saw. Mom gave me a spanking for being gone so long. To me, I was gone for one second. To them, I was gone for over an hour and a half, closer to two hours. Holy shit. A couple years later, I was attending a survival camp in the area I live now to teach the young ones how to survive and hunt in the wilderness. We called it bush. We learned to build a campfire, lean-tos, call moose, track game animals, and trap for food, and how to sit by a lick to ambush game. After four days and nights, the morning of day five, just before noon, myself and a couple others were walking back to camp along the river, which is like a wide creek in most places. Anyway... I spotted an enormous footprint in the sand, sunk in what must have been six inches deep and 14 or 15 inches long and close to six inches wide. A fellow young camper went to get an adult who told us it was just someone playing a joke on us. Being kids, we just shrugged it off as being just that, a joke. Later that night, just before bed, we were all told to sleep with our rifles in our tents. In ours, we had a 3030 Winchester Model 94. Loved them guns in my youth. In the morning, we were woken up to the same adult telling us to get packed up because something was walking around the camp all night just in the trees. So we just left our gear in the tent and threw it in the back of the trailer and left. Myself and cousin, who was only a few days older than me, began to jog out alongside the trailer due to there being no room in the trailer and us being the only ones who did not have an ATV. On the way out, my cousin has this great idea to take a shortcut to cross through a field close to half a mile from the gravel road in the house, so we both took off without telling anyone of our plans. Halfway through the field, this giant thing, which we could not see clearly from the distance it was from us, from the opposite side end pops out this thing we thought to be a huge grizzly standing on his hind legs. My cousin starts shooting at it, and I said, don't waste the bullets, just run. We ran as fast as we could for at least 400 meters, thinking it was going to get us. I knew when I was older that it was not a bear because bear are not that tall. The grouse is up to her chest. This thing could be seen towering over the grouse like it was only up to its lower thighs. Never had another experience till summer 2020 while working for the government as a supervisor for forest firefighters. I was out doing a site visit by a fire lookout tower and came across a huge print in the mud being about 5 inches wide and close to 14 long. I looked around and said, please don't bother me. I'm no threat and I'm not here for you. I did take a picture of the track, but like you say, big deal. Keep the info coming. Thanks for the channel. Wow. Okay, Kevin. Thank you for sending that in, man. Appreciate it. And uh, you know as well as I do, there is a pile of experiences in Alberta, right? They're all over the freaking place. That's crazy. Uh, your buddy starts shooting at the thing. I wonder what the what the reaction was or if he even hit it. Pretty crazy, man. Okay, keep rolling along here. Be true. If we were all true, the black cats would lose. Yate, it is a good day to die. If I am prepared, it is a good day. Something for you. Even though I love my country, it is not without faults, but I do not condemn the entire people for acts of few. As a native, they told me, you are cold, take this blanket and blanket and be warm. But the blanket was diseased and we died. Now they tell us, we know better. Listen to us. My answer to the woke, you think you are free, but you are slaves to a losing ideology. When I was young and knew nothing about the world, the mountain was a mountain, a cloud a cloud, and the waters were waters. When I was educated in the world, I began to understand and mountains were no longer mountains, rivers, no longer rivers, and clouds no longer just clouds. They became something else. They were explained away. I was told they were illusions by academics. But now I'm older and my perception again has changed. And again, I see 
the folly of academia and the education's definition of the world. When we accept as a child and perceive as a child this is truth and not the mere folly of academia explaining them away. Mark 10.15 Truly I tell you, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Yeshua The educate the wisdom of you. The educate the wisdom out of you. True educator means to bring from within. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. 1 John 1 5. I don't fight creator spirit. I recognize him because I have regained my mind. The leader people among any group says, you are not educated. My grandfather who escaped the Catholic's Indian eradication school in 1882 walked 2,000 miles at 10 years old. He said to me, if a Harvard professor addresses me at Harvard, he would make me the fool with all his books and learned knowledge. But if he walked into the desert with me, Texas Sonora Mojave, Mojave, who would you think would come back? He or I. Knowledge is not wisdom. They are educating the wisdom out of our children, to my ancestors, to my brothers and sisters, to my indigenous family. Why do your children die? Why do your women go missing? Because they listen to men who say, you are uneducated, you are just a stupid Indian. Drink this whiskey, eat this drug, and there is no one to defend your daughters. But we are not stupid. We are the wise. We are the uneducated and must retain your knowledge of your family and clan. Speak your tongue. Sing your songs to your children. This is wisdom of a thousand years. Yet, hey, this is true. White, black, or red, or brown, or yellow. Your culture was given to you by the Creator. The Adonai Ori, the land, the Lord of the light, spoken into existence maker of all things walk the blessing way this is how we win well eric appreciate that share man and um i know there's a lot of first nations people all people listening who appreciate your words and your honesty keep it coming everybody everybody gets a chance to speak man everybody gets heard here no matter what everyone gets heard and um Take from it what you will or leave it, all right, guys? It's up to you to decide. It's up to your instincts. You use your instincts, your gut feelings to, to, to guide you. Make sure you follow those rules, all right? You let your guts, your inside, your intuition, your sixth sense, you let that guide you. You are the authority on what or not um, to listen to anywhere, all right? And to take from it what you will or leave it. All right, here's a new one. Um, this is a follow-up to Fort Campbell tornado story with a first note for me. I got that, and I'll share that what was meant for all of you. Greetings yet again, Steve. It is Justin from the tornado slash hellstorm email. First things first, I want to thank you for sharing my experience with all your viewers and fellow seekers of truth and knowledge. I consider it tremendous tremendous kindness and honor to have my story told by a respected person such as yourself. I must admit that hearing you narrate my story, my experience was startling to me. Okay, man. Hey, thanks for those kind words, all right? And uh, thank you for sharing what you have. I immediately spun into the state of recall in regards to that training exercise. I read a comment from a young lady who expressed that tornadoes generally pass through a small area relatively quickly. This made the seven to eight hour bunker retreat all that more odd. Now that I think about it, I remember sleeping in the bunker. I don't know how, I don't know that I or anyone else really slept at all, at least not peacefully. Upon reflection, I can recall that I was completely taken back and disturbed by an odor that night, a stench that perhaps I attributed to my fellow soldiers at the time. We had already been out in the field for several days without bathing. However, I had been huddled in with soldier smells for years, and this seemed different to me. To be honest, Steve, that was one of the very few times that I felt truly vulnerable and fearing during my military experience. Kandahar offered a different spectrum of worry. You see, we were essentially asking for it. We were asking for a firefight with whomever was displeased with our presence there. Turns out it's a lot of people. This fear I felt in the bunker, it was different. It made me feel archaic and primitive. I don't perceive myself as irrational, but I can not pinpoint any logical reason as to why I felt so uneasy during this experience. After all, my late Aunt Caddy drove us through a tornado in Kentucky when I was about 13 or so. If I'm not mistaken, I've experienced at least two before my army days. I suppose that I'm saying this 
I suppose what I'm saying is that I knew that tornadoes were nothing to fear as long as you had a reasonable plan and access to safe, weatherproof structures. Anyways, I digress. We left the bunker the next morning, after the first light of the sun. This is perhaps the only time in my military career that we slept in. This was very uncommon for a rapid deployment unit like the 2nd Brigade Combat Team. Anyways, the next day was absolutely beautiful. I was surprised that we wrapped up the training event despite the planned expedition to a mock village built in the woods. This degree of training was considered crucial and invaluable. Everyone was looking forward to it, yet nobody complained that we were being shuttled away back to the post. No one ever spoke on it again, not once. It is understood since day one, the idea that training, deployment, location, combat, methodology, and general goings-on are to be kept silent and not spoken on to the civilian public. Personally, I think it is a bullshit concept. The secret clearance aspect of your military career. I believe in absolute transparency in every situation, especially when the military is at play, and even more so, the American military is involved. Let me tell you, Steve, they really do get into some shit. What initially pushed me to write the email, as well as this one, was your asking of the military or retired military to come forward. As far as any soldier, marine, sailor, or airman who experiences something beyond what has been offered in a public education spectrum, his, her, humanness should supersede his or her oath to the military. After all, it's a contract, especially a ruse to shove the serviceman into a corner of obedience. As a retired infantryman with a ranger tab, I can honestly say this. An order or guideline should be broken if it violates your ethical relationship to the world. No exceptions. Please pardon my, pardon my rant, Steve. I continue with my story with the platoon getting ready to head back to the post. Before we left the area, we inquired to our leadership about our TA-50 and other sensitive items, e-tools, hydration units, additional munitions, training materials, nods, night optical devices, and even larger caliber weapons such as the 240s and 249s we left behind during the night's sudden and frightening departure and were not going to be retrieved by us. This puzzled me, as leaving such equipment behind is treated very seriously by the leadership, who generally, generally respond with swift and focused punishments yet not a word was spoken about it. It is as if the military wanted, this, wanted to let this situation fizzle out. On the way back to the barracks, the ride was silent, with the occasional sound of repositioning weapons on the metal door. It was like a tangible energy followed us. It was ineffable, Steve. The world is an incredible place, and I can't help but feel that humanity is meant to do more than just turn the dollar. I've always thought about the why of it all, the reasoning behind large and clandestine government decisions to minimize, reduce, or restructure our relationship to, the relationship to this part of the world. I feel like over the next year, we will all see massive media efforts to educate the public on Sabe, Sasquatch, and the terrestrial creatures of all varieties. However, the information will be skewed, false, and void of real meaning, void of real knowledge. This seems to be the general operating procedure for large governing bodies. Gematria warning. I don't know if you're aware of the United States' blatant esoteric history and public ritual, but it is highly fascinating. It would appear that the governing body is obsessed with it and considers the value of gematria. Names, numbers, and public ritual greatly. Keeping in mind the Canadian government also has a nefarious and clandestine history of witches, warlocks, and remnants of the old world that is now shrouded in mystery. Here is a small yet interesting example of the synchronicity of number values, specifically the Jewish gematria of Sasquatch. The gematria Sasquatch value is 563. Other shared values of 563 are mutable element slash 563, variable and changing element. Interesting in regards to Sasquatch, is it not? Diana Francis Spencer slash 563. Diana, the late Princess of Wales, murdered in ritual fashion, having represented the symbolism, symbolized new set of values and self-invention the same year the Kentucky Bigfoot Research Organization was created. I don't know much about them other than that it was the big deal for the state. Trans, transcending time slash 563. Another interesting concept in relation to Sasquatch, eh? End of reincarnation slash 563 is a proposed idea that we as people are, to some extent, intertwined with these beings? Is this why space and time tend to dissolve and restructure during encounters? Who knows, eh? 
Yeah, interesting. All cultures have the antediluvian hairy man, the visitor from the stars, and now the disconnected relationship with them. I have for some time believed the theory that they, Sabe, Sasquatch, may serve as the genetic cradle for humanity, having represented the true evolution the true evolutionary process before being tampered with by beings from another place. This is where old world Luciferianism comes into play. It predates Judeo Christianity and has only to do with the argument among these technology wielding beings, the argument that the degree of intellect and cognition of these newly formed humans needed balance to contrast their celestial creators. Alas, the conflict arose, halting production efforts in lieu of warfare. This apparently left three or four templates of humans, two of which were very, very large. Giantism is found on every continent. I referenced earlier the old world. It has been said that there are beings living on the fringes of reality, or specifically the reality that we are told to believe. The Yazidi people of Iraq still carry this oral traditional accounting of early disc-shaped earth and our shared space with these creatures. Sadly, between combatant ISIS and NATO forces, they've been mostly killed off or forced to migrate. Whether or not those two organizations are different is speculative. I do feel that this kind of knowledge, if there is any truth to it, is compartmentalized within various secret societies and offered as rewarded milestones. There's a master mason, a marine, that blew his whistle by stating that technology was being used by Americans forces in Iraq and, and Afghanistan that projected the hand of God into the air, adding tremendous psychological strife to the unaware combatants, already stoked with religious fervor. It is a sensitive and complex issue which kind of information is categorized now, why and by whom. I mentioned this time that all of this is intertwined. I still believe this. Anyway, Steve, I love the channel and grow more fond of it with each video shared. You're doing a fine service to human beings, and your efforts are seen by many. Many, my, my thanks to you. I'm going to include five photos in this email, which you have my permission to share. Two are the CADRE, C-A-D-R-E, one of which being the first sergeant mentioned in the story. His name was Beck. The other man, tall, lanky, and stern, was Captain Dudish, who will also appear in this email. The other three are the training area, just for reference. This is where... We ran situational awareness exercises, mortar responses, and other simulation drills. Perhaps we were being watched the whole time? Who knows? Must much respect and support Justin F. Justin, that's a great share. Uh, absolutely appreciate it. I'm sure there's going to be many other people that absolutely appreciate that share as well. And it's funny when you mention uh, what I've noticed. You know, the military, they, they get threatened with their, with their retirement, with their, their income basically get threatened with their lives if they were to share any information with the people. But what about those literally hundreds of thousands of veterans that are homeless, kicked aside, kicked to the derb like an old burger wrapper on the side of the street? What about all those people, right? And why are so many of them so messed up and homeless and discarded? I don't get it. But that fact alone would make me think, you know, you guys take your disclosures and round them up your ass. Look what you've done to the majority of these veterans. It's disgusting, including Canada. North American, I don't know about the rest of the world, but I know for a fact Canadian veterans have been treated basically like a pile of feces. And that is fact. And uh, really makes me sick. So, again, maybe I'll repeat those words. If you're in the military and you have something that you want to share with the people who are more important than anything, the people, and you feel you have something that can help the people, share it here. And share my story at howtohunt.com or tell my story at howtohunt.com. And we'll get it to the people. No matter what, we'll get to it. And Justin, thanks again for sharing, sharing that email and the kind words, the supportive words. And make sure you share more. If you come across anything that will help the people, you make sure you get it out and share it. Okay, man? And uh, everybody be safe out there.